Hey there again, it's Dr. Peebler for another episode of Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. So we've laid a lot of groundwork about the metabolism in cancer, how it differs from normal metabolism. And we've talked about how glucose is the major fuel source for cancer cells through the process called the Warburg effect. We've also talked about how that creates the tumor microenvironment that leads to lactic acidosis, which further stimulates hypoxia inducible factor. Well, these papers are not going to be a shock to you at that point because they're going to tell us exactly what we expect given that information as a background. This is from a paper called Hyperglycemia, a neglected factor during cancer progression. And it says, recent evidence from large cohort studies suggests that there exists a higher cancer incidence in people with type 2 diabetes. However, to date, the potential reasons for this association remain unclear. So if you've been sticking with me during this video series, and you know that Otto Warburg understood that cancer prefers glucose and ferments glucose through what is now called the Warburg effect back in the 1930s and 40s, then it is a little bit unclear to me why the authors of this paper can't wrap their head around the association being unclear between hyperglycemia, type 2 diabetes, and higher cancer incidence. But I'll digress. Hyperglycemia, the most important feature of diabetes, may be responsible for the excess glucose supply for these glucose-hungry cells, and it contributes to apoptosis, programmed cell death resistance, oncogenesis, and tumor cell resistance to chemotherapy. Considering association between diabetes and malignancies, the effect of hyperglycemia on cancer progression in cancer patients with abnormal blood glucose should not be neglected. This is just a graphic that is showing where when glucose is in abundance, it's going to ultimately attempt to get into the mitochondria. When it's in excess, it's going to cause excess reactive oxygen species or oxidative stress, which is going to lead to further gene products that lead to cancerous progression. This is a very similar paper. Effects of hyperglycemia on the progression of tumor diseases. Malignant tumors are often multifactorial. Epidemiological studies have shown that hyperglycemia raises the prevalence and mortality of certain malignancies like breast, liver, bladder, pancreatic, colorectal, and endometrial cancers. Hyperglycemia can promote the proliferation, growth, invasion, and migration, and induced apoptotic resistance and enhanced chemoresistance of tumor cells. As you can see here, when glucose is high, you see high inflammatory markers, high insulin-like growth factors, high reactive oxygen species, and enhanced migration, invasion, resistance to programmed cell death, and resistance to chemotherapy agents. This leads to tumor progression. This paper, a newer paper from 2022, the relationship between diabetes mellitus and cancers and its underlying mechanisms, says that epidemiologic studies suggest association between diabetes and some cancers. The risk of a number of cancers appear to be increased in diabetes. On the other hand, some cancers and cancer therapies could lead to diabetes. Sounds like those therapies are going to lead us down the wrong path. Genetic factors, obesity, inflammation, oxidative stress, hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, cancer therapies, insulin, and some oral hypoglycemic drugs appear to play a role in the crosstalk between diabetes and cancer. And I've highlighted part of the actual paper itself. So previous large meta-analyses have estimated that diabetes associated with a 25 to 41% increased risk of mortality or dying from any cancer, which makes a lot of sense, right? We've talked about at length the Warburg effect. We've talked about how with the tumor microenvironment and the increase in HIF, 1-alpha, we have increased machinery from gene products for glycolysis, for uptake of glucose into, in the, into cancer cells. And it would make a ton of sense that if you have high blood sugar, you're essentially feeding the cancer. And that's exactly what the literature is showing. I don't quite understand how these researchers can't put two and two together that the Warburg effect and the metabolic processes in cancer don't have a direct relationship, but I guess it'll just take some time for the industry to take its eyes off mostly gene products and onto the biochemical mechanisms that lead to uncontrolled cell growth and cancer spread. The next paper I wanted to talk about talks about pseudohypoxia in terms of diabetes and hyperglycemia. So in the last video talking about hypoxia inducible factor one alpha, how not only hypoxia or low oxygen, but pseudohypoxia or cellular states that initiate a hypoxic-like response by stabilizing HIF-1 and the HIF family and leading to gene products that are created that would only be seen in hypoxia and how that process 
drives the Warburg effect and cancer growth and progression. And what this is saying is that pseudo hypoxia is similar, but occurs when excessive amounts of glucose are metabolized. As in the case of peritoneal interstitial cells in peritoneal dialysis, the glucose induced high NADH NAD ratio upregulates the hypoxia inducible factor gene, which stimulates not only glucose transporter, but also many pro fibrotic genes such as TGF beta vascular endothelial growth factor, plasminogen activator inhibitor one and connective tissue growth factors. This paper is showing very similar things. The role of pseudohypoxia in the pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is caused by persistent high blood glucose, which is known as diabetic hyperglycemia. The hyperglycemia situation, when not controlled, can overproduce NADH and lower nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide NAD, which therefore creating NADH, NAD redox imbalance leads to pseudohypoxia. So this is the graphic that was associated with the paper. You basically have high blood glucose that leads to an, a redox imbalance that causes pseudohypoxia, which leads to a reductive stress, which leads to an oxidative stress, which then leads to cell death and tissue dysfunction. So this is another mechanism that we have outside of lactate, outside of succinate and the other TCA intermediates, but just hyperglycemia in general, not only feeds cancer because the Warburg effect relies on cancer, but hyperglycemia also causes pseudohypoxia by stimulating more HIF and forward feeding the Warburg effect to its own benefit. I hope these are starting to make sense of why we've gone through these mechanisms so that we can, when we start to dissect the causes of how the Warburg effect is created, it helps us understand what targets we need to have for therapies going forward and how we can manage cancer in the future. One thing I wanted to mention is that if you like videos, please like, subscribe, comment on the videos. I try my best to get back to you as fast as I can and as detailed as I can. And if I get enough comments or questions about similar topics, then I can just make an offshoot video about those things so that we can solidify our understanding. Until next time.